Listen. Rabbit Luigi. Thankfully, Bowser's itching for a fight, too. At least he'll take it seriously. So, uh, Rabbit Luigi, if there are any salted honey crisp fritters in there, please bring some back. I wouldn't feel too bad for the farmer. He keeps trying to plant candy corn. reveals that there are a large number of enemies lurking beyond this darkness puddle. The battle ahead will require endurance. Princess Peach's safeguarding of squad mates is the key to victory. Ahem. And, and, Rabbit Peach's healing talents, of course. I was just about to bring it up. Honest, I was.
A dryad dreams. Spellbound. That's not much to go on. Oh well, we tried. Actually, the rhyme appears to contain valuable information as to where to begin our search using your new Beepo power. I know, Genie. I was trying to avoid getting sucked into someone else's problems again. Come on, read the room, would you? Yes, yes, yes! Whoop, whoop! Yip, ha, ha! 
Peck is a lumberjack who lives near the spellbound woods on Pallet Prime, a most curious figure, even for this planet. He lives alone, save for a live beaver he wears as if it were a hat. Being kept from using his beloved axe by mysterious forces working on behalf of Mother Nature has left him with frustration and discontent, but I believe there to be another reason, loneliness. Paladville is the cultural and economic heart of the planet, as residents are quick to remind everyone else. It is also a petri dish of gossip, petty jealousies, and schemes. Still, the village market more than upholds its reputation for artisan desserts and pumpkin-spiced beverages. Is it prosperity that breeds the self-serving behavior here? Or fame, perhaps? And if so, is it inevitable? I can confirm that the spellbound woods of Pallet Prime are breathtakingly beautiful, save for one minor flaw. Long ago, rabbits dug a well deep into the forest, hoping to find the source of its famously colored leaves so they could use it to create new and exotically colored pumpkin spices. They were shocked to instead find a secret room containing only riddles. They quickly abandoned it and fled. In my effort to translate the poet warden Woodrow for the heroes, I studied thousands of his poems. More than just a combination of rhythmic verses, I found them powerful, even moving, expanding and rewiring my neurotransmitters with each prosodic cue. Few things have contributed to my emerging emotional literacy like poetry. Perhaps I should try writing my own one day. Another pig merged with the DNA of a rabid and made vicious by Cursa. Oddly enough, it believes itself to be a ballet dancer. While it is graceful, especially considering the thwomp it carries on its back, it is the explosion of air it generates after pirouetting into the sky that impresses. They despise cold, but as they are weighed down by their thwomps, they are impervious to strong winds. Pallet Prime has been voted Most Romantic Vacation Planet and Best Engagement Photoshoot Location. Yet, its beauty hides a mysterious side to it that harbors many secrets. Luckily, Beepo's revealing powers, inherited by the spark Twinkle, have allowed us to see beyond the veil. I did not expect any single planet to curry favor with me, but I feel a strong connection to Pallet Prime. The depleter is a curious study. Rather than keeping its distance, it gets in close where it can deplete heroes of their vitality while strengthening itself in the process. When attacked, a special ability allows it to counter immediately. Water bothers them little. Indeed, it seems to have an answer for everything, save for shock-based electrical attacks. There is little to suggest that magicians are anything but elite foot soldiers in Cursa's army. They keep their distance from heroes, healing and protecting their allies as needed. Forged from lightning, they have optimal resistance to electrical attacks, but are surprisingly vulnerable to ooze. Fair is far beyond the battlefield, Rabbit Peach once said. She was not referring to ghostly walkers at the time, but might as well have been. They turn invisible while moving, rendering any reflexive reaction abilities worthless. There is one counter tactic. Frostbite charged attacks freeze them in their tracks, but we must be careful. When surrounded, they repel foes with strong gusts of wind. Another spark hunter crossed our path, Bedrock. Cursa has merged rabid DNA with an inanimate object, in this case, a coarse granite rock, massive, hard, and tough. Bedrock is impossibly strong, an unstoppable force let loose upon the sparks. Our sole advantages are that she is as dense as the granite she sprang from, as well as our alliance with Bowser, whom Bedrock respects as her equal in combat. 
What more can be said of Princess Peach? She is kind-hearted, yes, but also brave, and always putting the welfare of the other heroes before her own. She even has compassion for our enemies, a charismatic, capable, yet humble hero. It is little wonder she is so beloved by rabbits everywhere. When she is not busy saving the galaxy, the Mushroom Kingdom is elevated by her presence. An analysis of Rabid Luigi's earlier adventures versus the Megabug revealed that he has matured much since then. Yet, he clearly maintains a childlike role within the group. However, his relationship with the other heroes is as complimentary as his naivete is a welcome breath of fresh air. Does he make me smile as well? I have not the anatomical capacity, but the emotion? Yes, and I believe he does. Bioforms are so unpredictable. The dryad of the spellbound woods has been foiled to Sweet Lopec the Lumberjack for so long they became bitter adversaries. Yet, even after their feud reached its crescendo, the pair built a bridge, both literally and figuratively, between the worlds of nature and industry. Balance, compassion, kindness, these much more than blasters may be the key to setting the galaxy right. Earlier, I observed two bioforms, who were enemies and ideological opposites, find a common understanding which led to respect and then love, all in an afternoon. How did two creatures who have spent so much time in direct conflict become so infatuated with one another? Was it the intensity of their feelings that, when turned on their head, brought them together? Will I ever understand it? Can I?